Matt, I was sexually abused when I was four to the age of seven. Could that have anything to do with the fact that I try so hard to prove that I'm worthy of a man's love? Absolutely. And, and that that's actually a really, really common thing is, is so depending on what happened to you early on in your life depends on how you'll kind of interact with people and situations later on in your life. And so if you were abused sexually or physically or emotionally or something like that, when you're younger, it, depending on how, what kind of meaning you created out of that depends on what ends up happening later on. So if you create meaning that says that you're only worth kind of these certain things because that's what somebody used you for, then what you might end up doing is trying to prove that you're, you're worthy in other ways and you just continue to prove, try to prove, improve, improve, improve. And you have to break that cycle. You have to break that pattern that you get into and you have to change the way that you look at your life and change your story, change the way that you think about your story. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to say that, that, you know, any of that should be discounted or anything that you experienced should be discounted in any, any way. But what I am saying is that the way that you look at that event, because some people will look at that event and say, I'm broken, I'm destroyed, I'm not worthy, I'm, you know, a victim to life. And other people will look at it and they'll say, you know what, this, this has given me a mission to create something bigger and better in the world. It's put me on a mission to make sure that, that this doesn't happen to other people, to, to create awareness around this problem that's happening in the world. It, it's created a challenge for me, for me to, to get to a place where I'm not proving myself worthy anymore and that I know that I love myself and I know that I'm an awesome, amazing person and that I'm going to uh, create the life that I want. And so it really depends on the way that you look at it. And my suggestion is that you do whatever healing that you need to do around that and you spend some time reshaping the way that you think about your life now, and you don't have to go back to that period. Some people will talk about healing work and they're like, oh, they, you have to go back and experience all the emotions and stuff at that time. You can do that. That is one way of doing it, but you don't have to, you absolutely never have to go back and revisit that again for the rest of your life. If you don't want to, what you can do is change the way that you think about yourself change your identity, change your story about who you are and what your life is about and go in uh, this concept that I call identity hacking. And identity hacking is just looking at the way that you, you think about yourself right now. So if you think about yourself as, like I was saying before, if you think about yourself as broken, as not good enough, as, you know, disposable, as, you know, all these different things, right? that those things will define how you experience your life and how you interact with different people, especially men and relationships in general. And so what you want to do is, is figure out who you're, who you are at your best. Who are you when you're living your best life, right? What, what characteristics do you have? How do you act? How do you behave? How are you being when you're being your best? And I guarantee it's not, you know, being a victim or, or, you know, getting all woe is me and, and all that kind of stuff. Again, not to like discount anything that's ever happened to anybody, but at the same time, who you are when you're living your best is your, your most, for most people, it's they're inspired, they're confident, they're, they're strong. They're going after their life. They're, they're creating the things around them. They're, they're responsible for who they are and the, the results that they create in their life. They're, they're filled with love and enjoyment and happiness and excitement and all these things. Right. And, you know, it, what you can do is you can figure out, okay, when I'm being that way, when I'm, when I'm that person, you know, who am I like, and name it, actually create a name around that person, create an identity for that person, and then take on that identity. And whenever you're feeling sad or you're feeling down or you're feeling lonely, what you can do is you can say, you know, am I being this person, right? And some people will say the goddess, right? Or the queen or, you know, uh, uh, powerful, or, you know, sometimes they'll give it like an actual name, like, like Susan, am I being Susan right now? Or am I being this, this other person that I don't like being? And so, 
what you want to do is you want to get into that person that you're being at at your best as much as you possibly can and really integrate that inside of who you are and try to get into that person on a, on a daily habitual basis. And eventually, like I said, what you'll do is you'll start creating a new path and, and that new path will make you feel inspired and powerful and strong more of the time. 